There you go, bro. Can you hear me? Got you, Brian. Oh, man. Oh, it is so <laughs> great to talk to you. How many years has it been since we did it on FX Street, Brian? You know something? I went back and looked the other day. The Euro Yen was at 144. Wow. And that's when I said to sell the 144. Look where it is today. Amazing. It's yep. been almost three years. You know, Brian, uh, I, you know, I've known you for a while. We're good friends. You, uh, uh, we, you know, support each other. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's been such a long time, though, and I, it's something I normally open an interview with. I can't remember. Can you tell us a little bit about the beginning of your journey? I know you've been on this road for decades now, but yeah. how did it start for you, man? Uh, what, okay. what was your first gig, and what were you doing before that, and who do you blame for getting getting you hooked on FX? <laughs> huh? Okay. Good qu I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> um, I began around the 2003-2004 period. I've been a college teacher for the past 25 years. Okay. And I, I'm just an, I'm, an, I never got on staff. I was always an adjunct college teacher, but I survived for 25 years. I'm a political scientist. I'm supposed to be a political scientist. Um, okay. So, but, you know, I've been, in, I've been in the classroom for 25 years. Nowadays, you have to be a, a political mad scientist. Oh, man, I'm telling you, things have changed. And, and I, I've been, I, I haven't done it now since um, Inside the Currency Market was published in 2011. And I really don't have any desire because it's, it's different now. Students are different. They're lazy. There's, you know, there's one in a thousand that are really into these topics, you know. Well, anyway, you know, uh, haven't you even noticed that, Brian and uh... Coach? Sorry to interrupt, yeah. uh, but we can't see uh, Brian's uh, screen. I see it. You huh? do? Blank, yeah. <laughs> blank over. <laughs> Brian told me on trading. I have it right here. Okay. Um. Can why don't can... you do this, Brian? Stop sharing and share again, because perhaps... Uh, no, if it's only my issue, it's okay. Maybe it's, it's yours. Uh, how about the rest of the audience? Can everyone see Brian's screen? Let, I cannot just... see, says Umar. So it's not only me. No, Andres says no as well. Oh. Yeah, okay. They can't see. Yeah, All right, can. Brian, uh, why don't you... Uh, click share stop. button. Click yeah. share and then unclick share. Yeah. You click there and choose the screen you want to share. And if you're already sharing a screen, just I don't, have a, share. I don't have a screen to share. Ah, okay. So, oh, sorry. I see. Okay. All okay. right. Well, unless, I, you see. Okay. I, I, no, I, you know then, what? That's me. I, then, I'm going to share. I'm going to share. Gonna I'm going to yeah, show yeah. your website. Okay, buddy? Okay. okay. I, I'm going to grab it. Okay. okay. So. Perfect. I'm spaced today on a lot of things so far today. Hey, did you hear Jack, Dr. John passed away overnight? Dr. John and the Night Trippers? Dr. John, um, I was in the right place in the wrong time. Yeah, okay. That was it, yeah. Passed away wow. overnight. Wow. Did you hear that Carrot Top committed suicide? No. Serious? He threw himself into a juicer. <laughs> anyway hey, all right so yeah. tell us about your first gig in the okay. business right um, i'm showing your website here i was sitting i was sitting one day between classes and i was watching cnbc now i've been trading stocks for most of my life because my grandfather was a master stock trader for something like 55, 60 years of his life. He lived to be in his late 90s. And he was just a master, you know. And uh, currencies I knew nothing about. Um, so I just began investigating. It was 2003. And then one thing led to another. And then <clears throat> I began to download a demo. You know, I began to look up indicators. I, you know, I, I followed the path of everybody else, you know. But here's the thing. In the beginning of those indicator days, I was a loser, you know. I mean, just like everybody else that comes in, I was a loser. And I was tired of losing, and I told myself, I will not let this thing ever beat me. 
And I stayed at it. I stayed at it. Constantly working, constantly researching. I mean, I'm entering my 16th year to give you an idea of, you know, what staying at it really means. Well, I eventually developed a, uh, a moving average system, it, all based on statistics, moving averages from five days to 253 days. Because yeah, you never look at a chart. No, there's no need. Ever since something in like 2010, I, that's when I gave up indicators and charts. I mean, well, you know, I, I look with like the, the last guy that was just talking, I look with fascination when I see that. I like it. You know, but I don't, I would never use it because, man, there's a lot of becauses to this. The market price is wrong. There's so much wrong in a market price. And there's, but there's so much more to Tell be, us uh, just a few things that are wrong with market price. The averages are off. A lot of your averages are off. A lot of your targets then become off. Why uh, are the averages off? Because we're into the days of deep, deep compression of the averages. You have to look at a, at a longer-term view, um, more than 200. Because, because ranges are compressed? Yes, absolutely. Okay. They have been compressed. Okay. Anyway, let me, let me go on another second, and let's go on. I got, all, I got tons and tons of stuff prepared. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I developed a moving average system. 2011, uh, from 2010 to 2011, I wrote this book, Inside the Currency Market. Yeah, I'm showing it. This book was, I mean, it was Wiley. You know, everybody that knows Wiley, ever wrote a book for Wiley, they, zero promotion. I don't know why they published these books. My feeling was they did it as, they do it as lost leaders. So I signed into FX Street in early 2012. For the heck of it, I don't, I didn't know FX Street from a hole in the wall. So about three or four months into FX Street, I put on a trade show, the 2012 trades. And I was telling everybody, I can hit perfect targets. Targets, what's targets? Nobody understood the word target in the currency price in 2012. So I just kept posting trades. I said, this price, this currency price will go here. It went there. And this went on for, let's see, there were 25 trades, 36 no sleep days, and I hit something in the vicinity of 2,500 points in the 36 days. I was exhausted. I mean, I laid out on my, on my bed for like a day, and I was gone. I was no sleep days. Anyway, that became kind of my claim to fame. Francesc at FX Street, he wrote up this nice, wonderful thing about me. Um, and there were other, you know, other people writing things. So, but I progressed from that, from those days because our volatility, and let's not use the word vol, the compression of the averages, they, they all died. Well, come 2014, 2015, the ECB adopted, they were embarking on this new interest rate study, a two-year study. So, that's well, you mean uh, pre laying the groundwork, preparing for negative interest rates? And preparing for what we have today. All of this is derived from the central banks, and specifically the European central banks. What they did was this. Well, let me, let me, let me say this. My system today, my day trade system today, is all based on interest rates. I can use um, inside of my interest rate, daily interest rate system is also a long, long, long-term system, as well as the weekly trades. Let me see what does, but now what I had to do was, I had to figure this thing out to see what these guys were up to, you know, and this took, this took nights upon nights upon nights to work out how does interest rates and currency prices work. This stuff is not published. It's just you have to fight on your own to figure it out. I did. It took me months upon months upon months. At one point, I thought I had it, and I kept running into brick walls, and somebody wrote something. And I think, it, I, you know, I think it was Mark Chandler. He wrote something. Uh, there was a one line in his in something that he wrote. 
and it just it it triggered it my mouth dropped i went back and i began working reworking the system and now i got it i mean i have now a three-year um um daily trading system based strictly on interest rates okay that has what's your to, what's ahead. your business model brian what do you look what, what do you do do you uh uh, is it a subscription service? Uh, do you manage money? Uh, what's your goal and how are you using the system? Okay. For yourself, for people? Yeah. What's yeah, going most, on? Mostly for myself. I take on, I take on those interested traders, you know, come correct, come sincere, come and follow the script and you'll be just fine. You know, um, I tell people, anybody that I don't know, um, I tell them, whatever you know, whatever you think you know about FX and trading, throw it out the door and then, ent then enter because things have changed. The way that the actual currency price works is there are, there are so many nuances to this, Dale. I, I mean, it is astounding. I can sit here and talk for hours about How about it. this? And we won't talk for hours. Uh, a yeah. lot of people are calling this a... Uh, uh, action in the dollar pretty negative and the euro looks to be breaking out okay. of a pattern. Uh, what's your stuff saying about euro long term? Okay, you want to go to you want to go to the DXY first? How about that? Sure, go ahead. That's really interesting. You want to watch, here's your point to watch on the DXY. 9472. That is the five year average. Um and, and obviously at 96, price is trading above. You're pretty much, and then you have support, deep, deep supports, 95s and 96s, almost all day long here. You're pretty much, your range pretty much for the DXY is, a, is the 95, 96 to, to nine, I'll give you the specifics here. 99, 20, 99, 26, 99, 07, 98, 90, 98, 91. 9812 if you can catch those levels for for us and 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 short there you got a nice short on your hands if this thing trades above by some luck man you got yourself anything above these prices uh it's a free trade they're free money free money free trades okay you dream you mean about above 90 you dream about above your your highest resistance level is 9920 99.26, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, that supports, number rings a bell to me. Here's your support. Uh, your supports 95.72, 96.18, 96.00. Isn't that weird? And 95.61. Okay. The targets are pretty much at a 96. Do you have a bias? I mean, it's good to know those levels uh, where you think we're going to support from here or we're. Uh, yeah, a little lower. Yeah, a little lower. And, you know, I would look at that area right at the. Uh, Right around that ninety six eighteen or something above that, mm -hmm. um, that would that would be your long point. Um, as far as your long the averages and the long term averages on DXY, there's really not a lot wrong with it. Um, I, I don't see any major extreme moves up or down in any way. I just see more of the same moving forward. I see that it is. It's. I mean, if I have a bias, it's oversold. Okay, let me ask you this. I had a guy on who said that the central banks are, uh, he believes, as he looks at things moving towards parity, like, you know, cable being wherever it is away and the euro being whatever it is away, that central bankers want to bring a lot of these things to parity before a currency reset. Do you think there's any currency reset in the uh, future for the dollar and uh, is it's rain? I, uh, what's your take on you know people talking about this? And I, I want you know something. I watched that guy, and I but I watched it by complete accident. You know, I I saw it. I had a few minutes in my hands. I clicked, and I, I was I was amazed. I don't think that there is any such thing as all currencies moving to parity. Okay. I, I think that's a fallacy, I, and I mean respectful to him. He's got a good argument. I like him very much. He's got a good argument, but what do you have to think about? You have to think about the, well, what moves the currencies? The interest rates. Where are interest rates? 
Interest rates always trade below the currency. Be okay. One, you need the currency. Central banks want their currency to move. They want to make it um, 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 acceptable to buy it and sell it, to, to, to move it. Um, okay. Therefore, therefore, so, you know, I actually have a, uh, you talk about interest rates. Uh, I actually have, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen, but. Yeah, I can. Uh, okay. I'm looking for some type of trough here in the 10 and 30 year, uh, you know, here we are. Uh, looks like yields are pressing new lows here. Yeah, okay. So I'm looking for reasons to think that interest rates are troughing. Here's a 10 year, right? Yeah. Here's a 30, not even close to the low, which tells me that everyone who's worried about an inversion on the yield curve, it might be shocked because the 30-year structure is stronger, which says rates are going to go up faster on the long end than the short end because that's what the Fed controls. So if I'm right about yield uh, rates beginning to bottom out here in the U.S. and that they could head up to where they were last year, which is all the way up here, uh, how would you position yourself in the I, currency market? I go. I absolutely agree with that 100%. A hundred percent. Let me see. I mean, would, is that going to be dollar bullish? I would. I would. Or is uh, it going to be bearish because it's going to be flight capital out of long-term paper, and uh, we're going to have to pay people more for the promise that we're going to pay them back in thirty years? Where I'm looking at on the long term, I'm looking at the euro long term. Um, there's a sixteen, one point one six five zero target. The, 165 target? Yeah, one yeah, one point one six five oh, right in that vicinity. Oh, one sixteen and a half. Yeah, yeah, let's oh, see. Okay. Uh, yeah, got, that would be up here uh, that would complete the wedge objective. I'm looking at um there is So that's gonna happen the so that's gonna surprise people. If the forecast is correct and yields start rising here in the US, most people would say that's dollar bullish. But uh, you're you're saying that uh, the euro could see one sixteen, one seventeen. Yes. Easily. Okay. I, I you know I agree with you just based upon my technical work. I wasn't sure uh, you know if the interest rate differential. Maybe that means what Draghi said about not doing anything with rates yesterday is is real. And as our yields begin to uh, turn up again. Perhaps even the boon might get back to zero percent. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I would look at. Um, I would look at interest rate to interest rate between these two nations. People yeah. look at. People look at yields to yields. I don't. I don't. You know why I don't like that? Because it's the positioning between the United States and and Europe. We're we're complete opposites. The United States interest rates are are always priced and trade below and then and they price yields so that means interest rates first yields above in Europe yeah. in Europe it's reversed it's interest rates above yields below so okay. i mean so, you know you you're doing a crisscross on you're missing a lot in 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 that crisscross mm -hmm. so okay um you want to how about how about fed funds Go ahead. This is really interesting. I ran this data for 27 years, 27 monthly averages. You know, you're not on camera. You could be, and you could be showing this, but we'll do that next time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, you you know, I know you like. I know you like to use a whiteboard. So yeah, uh, this there is a whiteboard. <laughs> we'll do it next time because we can't see what you're talking about. Oh, unless you had a web, unless you used your webcam, you want to turn it on? Go ahead. How do you do it? I'll drop down menu. It'll say start video. Yeah, do that. No, you do it. Oh, I do it. Um, yeah. Drop down menu. So uh, up on top where you have the I'll volume. Up on top volume. Uh, well, I'll show you the, for next time. All right, go uh, ahead with Fed Fund. I'd love to show things. I've got so, so much to show. Yeah. That's so different and so um, 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 interesting and, and, and accurate.
At the same time, okay, Fed funds. Okay, I ran these averages from one year monthly average out to 27 years. And ask yourself now, where exact, now when I say I ran the averages, you have to look at not 2.50, the headline, that's not, that's not the indicator. The indicator is the effective Fed funds rate, which is the tradable, that's the daily tradable rate. Um, you have to count, if, if, if the headline is, is 2.50, you have to count 12 and a half points below um, that, below 2.50, and that will give you the effective rate. That effective rate has been trading right around um, 2.38 for since the last, um, since the last raise. And that's where I, I took my data from 2.38. And I entered data from 2.38. Right now, the, the Fed, Fed funds trades between the, how about this? Is this sick? Between the one year and the 24 year monthly average from 2.13 to 2.47. That's, that's, that's a lot of light years in between. Um, yeah, well, we haven't seen these rates since the Civil War. Yes, practically. And we're almost in another one. Right. So, uh, uh, right. All right, buddy. So uh, uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? And we'll do this again oh, down the road with the webcam. Huh? I, I didn't mean to blow all my times like that. Okay. Uh, B2Me.com or Inside the Currency Market. Go ahead. Wrap it up with your most important advice to people looking to speculate in the market. If Fed funds, if they cut interest rates, one and done, I don't see it going to, I don't see it going anymore. Simply because one Fed cut would put the effective rate at 2.26. Two cuts would, and then that would give it a range between 2.19 and 2.33. That is not terrible. If they cut twice, that means you're going to trade the effective funds rate below 2.19. That's, you know, I don't think you want to do that. You're, you're into, you're into, you're into a different territory when it comes to these, to these. What, average. Would you say crisis level? Uh, if they have to go more than once, if there's a financial crisis happening. Yeah. Leave, I mean, leave, leave the powder open for, you know, for action in case it needs to be taken. You I mean, mean like S&P 2200 instead of here at new highs? Save your ammo for when you need it? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, okay. if anything, one and done. I, I don't see why they should go to. I, I, you know, it's, in terms of the effective rates, I don't see it. I don't see why would you want to do it? Why and, would you? And want you to mentioned to me on Twitter, you're pretty optimistic about the future of the economy. I think you said something I am. Like, uh, GDP, like GDP. You were talking about. Yeah, I ran that data too. too. Um, GDP is is at three point one and three point two. It trades. I design ten year averages for the um, for GDP on, uh -huh. on a ten year basis. You get the data from the, um, actually from the New Zealand Central Bank, for anybody interested. This is real GDP, not nominal. Um, 3.1, um, last reported, it's off the charts. It's not even, it's above the 10-year average. I see the economy at the 2.0s, as, as many have forecasted, 2.0s, 2.5, 2.3, all day. I mean, all day. I don't see any problem. With, with these averages. They're in good shape. I see GDP in good shape. Um, Trump was talking about um, 4.0 and, and Kudlow as well. They were talking about 4.0, 5.0. They were not kidding about this, okay? okay. 4.05, 4.07 happens to be the major top right now in terms of all of these averages. Um, I don't see that hitting just yet, but I do see if Trump can keep it alive, you know, there's no missiles fired, you know, then, and there's no radical changes in the economy. I don't see why we can't continue higher, you know, okay. over time. But, you know, obviously, if you have a fast move higher, that's not going to be good. You know, you need, you need a, 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 a slow and steady rise above. Okay, no warning signs for the U.S. economy. Uh, Brian Tuomi, sanguine about it, optimistic about it. Uh, you can follow Brian on Twitter at author 
Brian Twomey. Uh, what's your website address here, Brian? You want to give it to the crowd? InsideTheCurrencyMarket.com or B2Me.com. Either one works. Okay, and uh, pick, up, pick up this classic from Wiley, Brian Twomey, and, uh, you know, consider that there are many ways to skin a cat, and I guarantee you that many people in here uh, have not talked to many that do not use technical analysis and still can trade FX. So, uh, thank you, thank Brother you. Dale. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Have a great weekend. May pips rain down on you, my trader. Thank you, my brother. brother. Stay healthy. Stay good. Okay. Adios, everyone. Have a great weekend. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And I'm going to see everyone later on. So uh, let's see how I end the meeting here. Adios, everyone. Have a great weekend.